here we are, we're just checking the results of night two. Uh, nothing yesterday, very quiet. There's actually nowhere near as much sign on this property at the moment as what there were, was last time. But having said that, uh, in the areas where we have found sign, there is a lot of sign. So I'm expecting the dogs to be running in a couple of packs and uh, probably we'll get like very little or we'll get a couple of a hit. So uh, yeah, there's a beast died in the yards here, broke its neck in the yards, which is probably pretty rare for these guys because they're, they're such good stock handlers. Anyway, this crazy young one broke its neck. So I've got the front legs tied on the bull bar and we'll use those strategically as we go here today. I'll check this creek crossing here. And straight away, I see the uh, the uh, tracks of goannas here, but we've got dog tracks right here. Dogs have been through here. Goanna, okay, that's good. Two dogs, probably. Excellent, we reckon, skunk. That's what I'm going to do soon with this little Suzuki. I'll lift the suspension, put some better shocks underneath it and put some big motor tyres on it. So we've got plenty of grip and she will be unstoppable. Oh, yeah. Okay, this next crossing here is as far as we got to yesterday. This is like a dead end road here. We can't get across the main river. Uh, so it takes a bit of getting into this, this paddock, but we saw a lot of sign here. So fingers crossed. Okay, sit, 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 sit. I'll try and unpack this. This doesn't look good. Another goanna. Another big goanna caught on bitch's urine. Yeah, you bite up on a big goanna. Scratch. Yeah. Some people think it's terrible catching these big fellas here, could we? Right. But the truth of the matter here is that up in our country, we don't see many of these anymore because the cane toads have literally wiped them out. Cane toads are just, these fellas eating the cane toads, poisoning themselves and dying. Down here, no cane toads. There's goannas everywhere. This is the 10th one I've seen in two days. And we can catch them. They don't hurt. They don't get hurt in the traps. And uh, we let them go. Uh, a lot of people would just knock them on top of the head. I won't do that. So we'll get this fellow out and get him, get him back up a tree somewhere. Oh, fella. Don't scratch me. I just don't want to be scratched. It's a tricky situation when you're going to try and keep hands on deck. Dodge your scratching claws, keep your balance, get your foot over there, and not get bitten. Yeah, baby. There he goes, he's got a bit of a mark on his hoof, but nothing that won't, won't uh, fix. Look at that. Hey. Go, go get on out of here. Get. This is the dilemma. Uh, now we're gonna shift the traps. Cause he'll probably come back, do the same thing again tomorrow. Hasn't been hurt. Uh, like I said, in our area, they're simply gone. They're not there to have this problem because 
They've been wiped out by another introduced species. Little fella coming down here looks like he's been bitten. Pretty bad back leg. Looks in fact that it could be just broken. Okay, skunk, have a look around here, bloke. Got the big river here, high mountain country, big water hole goes right around here. So, any dogs coming out of that rough country, I reckon would sort of skirt around here and come down to a point where it's a lot easier for them to cross. So, what I'll do is I'll drop one of these legs here, put the scent going that way. Heaps of goannas here for sure. You can see their marks. They're going up the trees. My scratch marks are heaps of goannas. So let's give them something to eat. I'll put a leg here. They can eat as much as they want. But I think I'll set for my dogs over here where I can sort of guard from the cattle. I'll probably just use scat and urine here um, so as not to be as big an attractant for those, uh, for the goannas. Because that's going to be a number one issue on this trip, keeping those critters away. I think this is a pretty good sort of pinch point here, but it's where to get a trap in that's not going to get wrecked. I'm going to try and just dodge the cows. Just hope that they walk around here. If a dog comes through, I'm going to put a scat on that rock. Visible, highly smelling. Skunk, come and have a look at this rock for me, dude. Skunk. Skunk, where are you marking there? Skunk, have a look. Nothing. Up, up, get up, up, up. On this particular job here, we've got to commute every day about oh, 20 k's between properties. There's a whole heap of road work going on which makes it a little bit more difficult but that's where this uh, Suzuki is so good because uh, you know, we couldn't do this with a uh, with a buggy. Right we're heading into the um, area where the uh, two dead beasts are. The dogs are here but to me they're in two big packs. Uh, well, I say big packs are probably half a dozen in each pack. I wouldn't be surprised if we're dealing with you know 12 to 20 dogs in the area, but there's so much country around. So they've only got to have a dead beast somewhere or some other reason not to be here, and we might not see a dog here for you know the next week or 10 days. So it's it's actually pretty tough going. This is all you need. Birds or something have been here. Shifted the stepping stick. Knocked that little branch over the top. Shifted the stepping stick. All right. And just probably all it needed to stop that from being affected. Come up to this sand pad here where there was some tracks a couple of days ago. All of that is cattle and a goanna over the top of it. That set under there hasn't been touched. It hasn't been touched either. We've come up here into the top of this big basin. Just looking for sign, like it's been uh, two nights now and no dogs. Uh, very little fresh sign. But there's all these big mountains right around this place. And uh, to me, the dogs are just not down on the flats at the moment. They're not just down on the easy country. Uh, they're way back up in here. Just doing what dogs do. So we'll just get ready. We'll set up on all the tracks leading out of these rough places. Hard to get back there. Well, I just look at it. If they're back up there in the land town and chasing wallabies, just leave them be. They start coming down here where the calves are. We'll have a welcoming com uh, committee for them.
Here we are, checking the, uh, the wine up. Night three, nothing on the ground yet. I think the dogs are there, but they're just further back up in the hills. I got on to National a Animal Handling and Husbandry at Armadale. Uh, they sent me a brochure before Christmas. So I uh, contacted them and said, could you send me one of each of your best lures? trapping lures and uh, yeah we'll just see how they stack up against what we're using already. The ground's pretty hard at the moment. Now we just saw a skunk canter through there. You yeah, look at what tracks he's leaving, right? That one's discernible. These ones really aren't. So even on patches of sand it's hard to get a, uh, a solid uh, reading on what tracks you've got. So you've got to actually look for the right ground. You've got to look for uh, a piece of ground that a dog might walk through that will hold a track. So when you're tracking, you're looking at everything, but you're looking for the right patch of ground, the right sort of uh, mud or the right dirt that will hold a track or part of a track. And that then a lot of times confirms what you've been looking at because you might have been tracking something, so I don't know whether it's a dog or not. And then you'll get to a point and go, yeah, it's a dog. What? 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 The trouble with a lot of uh, the, the trapping lures that I've used in the past, I see them a lot like um, fishing lures. They catch a lot more fishermen than they do fish, a lot of these lures. Uh, some of them work, but I've always preferred my own stuff. Uh, some have been dismal failures. There's only, there's only way of putting it. Um, but then, there's a lot of people putting a lot of time in now to, um, to getting them right for Australian conditions. So let's give these ones a crack. The one I'm trying here for a start is one of the long distance ones, the Gotcha. Um, and that's what I need in this situation. I'm coming off the road, off the track, uh, where I think a dog might be coming through. In amongst the roots of this tree here, just a simple wire set onto the, uh, onto the root of a tree foam under the pad on the uh, jake trap and just put it straight in here with a little bit of that long distance lure to try and stay away from the cattle where they'll be going through. If a dog's coming along that track, there's a chance that he'll come up here and have a look. So here is the finished set basically got everything covered except for the wire that goes over there and I'll put a little bit of grass or a fern over that now. Sets just in there, just over that little stick. And all I've done for a, a lure, I've got a piece of stick and I've wriggled it into the um, um, little tub of gotcha. Uh, so it's just enough to go on the end of that stick. I just poked it in the ground over there so it's off the ground, sand will waft through that way with the southeasterly breeze, and uh, let's see whether it works. So I've come up here into a distant gully, looking for sign. Not there, maybe, but calf, I think. That could be, could be, okay? If that's, well, it's definitely calf there, there. There's a definite track, definite dog track going that way. Could be, and that's all. Could be, definitely, that's a bigger dog. That's a bigger dog there. That's the sort of area that you're looking for. You're looking for somewhere that you can read a track. Like all this other stuff here, you're only guessing. You get your little sand patches or mud patch, you're on. Just set this one in here, tie it off on the base of a little sucker there. It won't go anywhere. A little bit of a pass through here. Uh, 
again, not complex set at all. Uh, I'm going to try the Baitmaster on this one. It's a very waxy, syrupy lure. Never used this one before. And what I'll do is I'll just get a little bit on a stick. So usually what I do is just I'll just run the uh, stick in a bait like that. And I'll put it into the grass out of sight here somewhere where they've got to forage for it a little bit. But that Just need a little bit more dust. Just dust that over. Make sure the colour is the same as the surrounding ground. I'll leave that very simple. And the lure I use this time is Stinger. Just on a piece of stick. So for this trap, I've picked this big old uprooted tree here. Okay, it's on a big flat down by a creek. Marshy area there, so I feel if a dog was coming around, to be coming around the top end of it, top edge of it, hunting around there. He comes through here. Now this is a good place, just to have a sniff around, have a look around. Okay, so I've just gone in there and I've put a trap in under the base where the cattle can't really get at it, using just bitchy rind, a little bit of rag, a little bit of lantana to steer them in. Basic sand set. Now I didn't see any sign here, but this creek crossing really looks like a a good place for a dog to duck through across this creek. So I've come in here, there's cattle tracks everywhere. You know, they're coming through all the time. So I've gone off the track here and I've put a trap there at the point of that um, log, hopefully to keep the cattle off it. All right, we've brought the drag up here, right up this track, up a big long valley, high ridges all around us. Humidity here is right up, it is hot. Um, so I'm thinking the dogs are down. I think they're down on the river more so than here, but things will change. We get a little bit of uh, rain comes through, temperatures drop down. I think the dogs will start to work some of the tracks again. So I'll set this one up here. Nice little crossing, rocky crossing. No sign, but Skunk was a little bit interested, not really. So I'll set one on. The lure I'm using here is Red Dog. Okay, I'm just gonna put it there. Hopefully keep the cattle away from it and just I'll put a little bit of a dribble of this down the front of that front of that log, get them to try and come in there and lick or sniff upwards at that log. Put their foot there. Well we're slowly getting the traps in place. This is checking night three. I think we've got 40, 38 traps in the ground. I've sort of been struggling to find places with good sign. So I'm not not just going to chuck traps in anywhere. I'm in no rush to put traps in the wrong place. So the ones we have got in have all got a chance of firing. So I think we've got our net cast pretty wide now. We've just got to have things start to move. But these are so human. I think the dogs are just not moving. I think I've got. I've actually got three dingoes I can see in front of me. I might have one here in a trap. I think I've got one in a trap and the other ones are right next to it. So I'll go down close enough to see if I can shoot. That turned out to be a bit of a balls up. I was coming down the spur there, heading down, I came to the first lot of traps and uh, I dropped out two legs there off that beast that broke its neck in the yards and I um, put one at the first lot and about 150 meters further down I put a second one and two traps at each. Anyway I uh, rolled into the first trap sets and I thought no, nothing here but you could see cattle had been all around the one trap and I didn't realize but the second trap was set off. And I looked down the hill, you know, 100, 120 metres, and uh, I saw a dingo move, you know, walk across between a couple of the logs. And I thought, you ripper, I've got two traps there. I'll have I'll have a dog in these uh, traps. Uh, for sure, might have two. Anyway, then I saw a second one in the grass, 
And I grabbed the, the uh, two of these three, I said, right over, well, if I've got a couple in the traps, I'll go and I'll try and get a third one or a fourth one. And uh, anyway, started getting in closer, and there's four dogs all told, and two started to head away. And I thought, oh, boy, you know, it's a pity, but maybe I'll just leave them, and, and um, you know, I've probably already got two in the traps. I can see them, they're really panting, their tongues are hanging out, and they're panting away because of probably the humidity. And uh, I got into about probably 70 metres, I suppose, off these dogs. And then the one that was beside the traps within, you know, probably 10 feet of the first trap, uh, and I thought was, you know, must have been in the trap on the end of the lead. And uh, anyway, he got up and walked away. I thought, well, he's not in the trap. So there was three I could see. There was, no, there was four I could see that weren't in traps. I thought, well, maybe I've got one and the other one. I'll try and shoot another one. So when they came out, I went whack and hit the, the one. And they come streaking out past me. I let go and hit a tree on the second shot. Got the tree. Anyway, um, I went over there and the cattle have wrecked both the, uh, the other traps. So... Uh, the dogs are right beside them and uh, maybe they've even been to the first one so there was a situation where my four traps all basically wrecked by the cattle and I got four dogs in the um, in the vicinity right on, on uh, the target uh, they've been chewing at one of the legs and uh, yeah got one First one's down here somewhere. There's the first one, dog down.